Hello, my name is Amy McMillan, and I've prepared a book talk for adult readers who don't read graphic novels, but maybe should. So the first graphic novel I'll talk about today is Blankets by Craig Thompson. Life is bleak for young Craig at the beginning of this memoir. First of all, he's bullied at school by towering bullies who say things like, ooh, don't touch Craig, you'll get a disease. Or, look girls, we have a little baby. At home, things aren't much better. His parents are ultra-religious, ultra-strict, and ultra-poor. There is a space in his home called the cubbyhole, where he and his brother are sometimes put for punishment. And the cubbyhole is not a room, it is just a space behind some wood paneling that is unlit, unfurnished, and full of vermin and spiders. Uh, in his teenage years, Craig thinks he'll join the ministry, which is a problem because he loves to draw. For example, on page 42 you can see how Craig escapes his life into his imaginative drawings. But he feels that his drawings might be taking him away from his faith, so later he throws all of them in an oil barrel outside of his house and burns them. He's haunted by the memory of his Sunday school teacher who said they would all spend eternity in hell. Now as readers, we know that Craig's life is going to take a turn for the better. We know he will be a successful memoirist someday, but the joy of this book is following him through his struggles to see how he makes a good life for himself. The next graphic novel I'll be talking about is called Girl in Dior by Annie Goetzinger. This book starts off in 1947 Paris when Christian Dior runs his first fashion show. Um, it was quickly called the new look by fashion journalists because his clothes were so different than the World War II minimalist style. So they were cinched waists, um, long hemlines, crin crinolines, the models wore pearls and wide brimmed hats. It was radically different than what was happening before. This graphic novel follows the uh, journey of a fashion journalist named Clara who watches Christian Dior's rise. Um, the interesting thing is Christian Dior was only 40 years old when he, he ran his first show and he died at the age of 52. So over 12 years, he impacted fashion for decades to come. But the real reason to read this book is the artwork. If you like clothes, if you like art, if you like looking at beautiful things, you will want to read this book and you will want to read it again, just for another little glimpse of what you might see in this book. It also is a picture of what life was like in the world directly after World War II. So, Girl in Dior by Annie Gotzinger. The most famous book I'll be talking about today is called Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. This book is about Allison's dad, and he's an English teacher. He also runs the family's funeral home part-time, or fun home as they like to call it. But her dad's real passion is restoring the Victorian home that they bought for the family to live in. Her dad was successful in restoring this Victorian house, but he was not successful in restoring his life. Um, the, the, climb, the beginning of this book, we find out that Allison came out as a lesbian when she went to college, only to find out that her dad was also gay. Tragically, two weeks later, he killed himself. On page 55, we can see Allison as a college student lying at her father's grave, which is shaped like an obelisk, his favorite shape, before the next page tells us that old catastrophe, when we find out what happened with her father. Um, one interesting artistic style that Bechdel has is on page 57 she has a dictionary page focusing on the word queer and then the caption says my father's death was queer in every sense of that multivalent word. So why did Bechdel's father kill himself? Why do people do anything they do? How do our childhood relationships shape who we become? To find out more about this, read Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. The next book I'll be talking about is called Dirt Candy, Flavor Forward Food from the Upstart New York City Vegetarian Restaurant by Amanda Cohen and Ryan Dunleavy. 
Dirt Candy is about a restaurant of the same name that's owned and run by Amanda Cohen. This book really talks about how do restaurants make it in New York City? Why does one restaurant close while another one is successful? What does it take to be successful in the restaurant business? Dirt Candy is a small restaurant. Amanda's the chef. They have nine tables, two waiters, one sous chef, chef a dishwasher, and a prep chef. She, it's a vegetarian restaurant, but she calls it a vegetable restaurant because she thinks vegetables are the wild west of the food industry where anything goes. There's, um, in this beginning panel, you can see adult Amanda talking to childhood Amanda about why child Amanda should eat her vegetables. Um, the other fun thing about this book is it's written sort of like a video game. Each character has a skill level and um, a reliability level, and then each chapter is sort of like a game challenge. For example, why isn't corn on the menu? Um, it, 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 the challenges one might face in this book are what do you do if a patron loses his cool? What happens if the produce vendor doesn't bring your vegetables? If you succeed, then you level up. If you fail, you lose business or in the video game world, one of your many lives. This book is fun for anyone who likes to eat anyone who has ever worked in the food service industry, or anyone who feels like they want to be kinder to the restaurant staff when they visit. So it's Dirt Candy by Amanda Cohen and Ryan Dunleavy. The only non-memoir I'm going to talk about today is Patience by Daniel Close. This book is part love story, part mystery, part sci-fi adventure, and part time travel saga. We begin in the year 2012 with a couple in love. Um, in the beginning panel, you see the blonde haired young lover saying, God, when I think of my life before you, it was a horrible reality show. One day though, Jack, our hero, comes home to find his true love dead, murdered. And guess who's blamed for it? Skip to the future. We start again in the year 2029. Jack, gray-haired, boozy, about to be kicked out of a dive bar, is still trying to find out who was the real killer of his beloved. His only lead is somebody with a working time travel machine. So Jack decides he has to travel back in time to find out who wanted his fiance, who was pregnant by the way, killed. This book tries to answer, is true love ever enough? Can it really save us? Patience by Daniel Close. Thank you.